Today, we are finally doing it. We're building our kitchen. We've been looking forward to this a long time. Ever since we bought the apartment over a year ago, we haven't had a proper kitchen. And for over half a year, this has been our very temporary, not so temporary setup. And in one of the last videos, you saw us build a kitchen island in our workshop. That thing is now completely taken apart. And we're gonna assemble that whole thing right here. It's gonna sit on top of the base frame that we installed months ago, even before we put in the flooring. So that whole assembly is just gonna sit on top of here. Super nice and easy. <laughs> With one exception, I forgot to account for the height of the floor when I made this, so we'll need to remove it, space it up a little bit, and then we can see if the rest of the pieces fit. I cannot begin to describe how good it feels to, after months of work, actually start to assemble pieces in the apartment. Now the whole assembly process and everything should go pretty fast. There's really only two things that I need to make fit before we can just reassemble everything just like it was in the workshop. One of those is the sidewall, which I still need to trim off to the right length. But first, you might remember that I have this overhang on the island, which is gonna curve around and meet the side of the window opening. Now, I've intentionally left a bit of extra material here because I wasn't really sure of the angle. Now, I've made sure that the whole island is aligned towards the back wall. So now I can just make a straight line based on the angle of the window opening, <laughs> trim that off, and then get the whole island in its final resting position. I mean, I'd say that this looks like a kitchen island. And for the most part, things fit together pretty well. I got both these pieces to fit in towards the window opening. And then I've also installed both the back wall and the side piece here. For both of these, I left a bit of extra length on there when I made them so that I can just align everything, make sure that everything was in the right place, and then trim off the excess length on both the side and the back wall. For the back wall, actually, since it meets up against the exterior wall, which definitely <laughs> isn't straight, I first installed it, pushed it up against the wall, and then marked up the curvature of the wall, cut out the piece, which I didn't film, you gotta believe me, reinstalled everything, and everything looks fantastic. Now, after disassembling everything and putting everything back together, this time around, I actually assembled everything with glue and screws, and for this exact reason, we masked off the area that will become the glue surface on each one of the boards, before we went to put some finish on it. That way the glue has actually some place to stick properly. Now, everything is in the right place and I've actually attached it to the base frame, but I suspect that that is not the last thing I'm moving things around because next up is the cooking top, which has an integrated ventilation system that needs ducting and an outlet. And we're probably gonna have to drill some holes in most of these parts. But first up is measuring and cutting out the hole for that thing. Tell you what, took a bit of doing. Doesn't fit. I had to do that a couple of times, but I think I got it in the right place. And even more importantly, got all the ventilation ducting sorted. To make my life easier, took the back wall off. I'll put that back on in a minute. Turns out I also miscalculated a little bit with the overhang here. So I'll have to fix that somehow later on because right now, the ducting would be showing through the baseboard. So the way this thing works is that there's a fan in the middle here that sucks all the fumes down through the ducting and then blows them back out down here in a big filter and blows the hot air on your feet. To make that whole thing fit, had to get a little bit creative and chop that whole bunch of the baseboard, but it's still plenty strong. Now that we know that everything will fit, uh, you can take that thing back out. <sighs> These things, by the way, were just a placeholder for the thickness of the countertop material. So now to make this thing completely solid, we'll screw and glue these two sheets together. The whole thing is a lot more solid already, but I still want to attach it to the side of the window opening. Now the way I've done that is that I've screwed in some large wood screws into the side here, and I made some notches to fit 
around those screws in the top surface. My plan now is to mix up some quick set epoxy, smush that in there and just lock everything in place. And then once all that is set, we'll glue the car top on top of there, locking those screws in place and hopefully making this whole thing sturdy enough. And this wall here is ultra board, which is a super hard fiber reinforced drywall by no yips. And it's crazy strong. In theory, I think one of those screws should be able to hold around 40 kilos. So I'm hoping that's gonna be enough to support the overhang. Now, while that dries, let's install some drawers. And as opposed so last time when you saw these drawers, we took them all back apart, sanded everything and applied finish. Then we reassembled all the parts. We'll have another quick look at the finishing process that we ended up with. But you might remember from my previous video where I did all the sample boards for all the different finishes and oils. Those boards are all the underside of all the drawers. So if we ever want to go back and have a look at all the work that we did, or maybe look at some sample for an upcoming project. We can always just lay down on the floor and go through all the samples. Oh man, this part is so satisfying. I've only assembled and installed the drawers on the sides because since we now installed that duct thingy, these large drawers need to be slightly modified since they definitely would interfere. And I wasn't quite sure how much I had to modify these drawers ahead of time, now that everything is installed, I can take some measurements and then we'll finish up the rest of those drawers back in the shop where we still need to make a few more parts. <laughs> but first, a quick answer to today's sponsor, Kiviko. Kiviko makes hands-on projects for kids that are designed to be more than just a toy. Their crates teach educational topics like science, art, and engineering, and are designed to spark a child's curiosity and creativity, and encourage them to see themselves as makers. Now, every box comes with everything you need for that month's project, so you never have to worry about not having the right tools or running out of supplies. Now, the crate that I got to try out this month is the Eureka Crate. And this month, I got to build this really cool programmable music box. Now, I had a ton of fun building this thing. And just look at how cool it is. The crates are designed by experts and tested by kids. And they actually spend over a thousand hours creating each one of these projects. They also offer a variety of individual crates in their store. Everything from walking robots to ice cream making. You'll find something exciting for every kid. They make amazing gifts and are a great way to experience Kiviko before subscribing. Click the link in my description below or use my promo code ALCH for 50% off your first month. Back in the workshop, this is a drawer just like all the other ones. It consists of front, back, two sides and a bottom. I took some measurements of everything that got in the way of the drawers, spent a bit of time, made a drawing, figured out all the dimensions, and it's now time to modify all these parts so they actually fit. But really quickly, before we get to that, you might have noticed that there's a little bit of a change since the last time you saw the Kitchen Island. That being, it used to be this color, and now it's this lovely brown color. Now, in case you didn't watch my previous video where I went into depth of surface finishing and Probably you didn't watch it because that video did really bad. I'll quickly summarize how we got to this point. In the previous video, I tested a bunch of different brands and a bunch of different methods of applying the products. Now, after a lot of testing, we finally ended up on Rubio Monaco. And quick disclaimer, after we did all the testing, we reached out to Rubio and they kindly provided us with the products to treat the entire kitchen. The way we went about applying the finish to all these parts was to first sand everything up to 180 grit. Then after sanding, Rubio wants you to use their cleaner, which is in preparation for applying the product. <laughs> now, I'll be honest with you here, I didn't do that to all the parts. I did do it for some of the larger parts, but in many cases, I either just blew the dust off or didn't do anything. And all the parts turned out great. For the small parts, we just wiped it on, either with a cloth or one of these pads, or for the Big parts, we used a orbital sander with one of the pads attached to it. Now, although it's pretty easy to apply, it does take such a long time when you have this many parts. I had great help for Wilder though, and while I was sanding, she applied the finish to all the parts. Oh, and like I mentioned, for the drawer parts and all the parts that need glue surfaces, I made sure to tape off all the surfaces before we apply the finish. So when I now go to assemble these drawers together, the glue will have something to grab onto. We let the product sit for a couple of minutes and then wiped everything back off to the point where you can't wipe back off anymore. Make sure that there's no dry spots where there's too little product. And if there are, spread it out some more, wait a couple more minutes and then wipe it off. Now for the vast majority of the parts, like all the parts for these drawers, that was it. But for the parts that are more visible, all the fronts, all the visible edges and those big surfaces that we just installed in the island, we applied a second coat 
The only real difference is that the color gets a bit more even, a bit more saturated, and also adds a bit more shine, which I think just looks fantastic. But man, all the parts spread out in the entire workshop like that sure take up a lot of space. So I want to show you a quick little side project that I did. I made a drying rack that you currently see is loaded up with all the parts for the big main wall. And just look at how many parts you can just load up in here. Now that whole thing is made up of basically just Ikea parts and random scraps of lumber. The system is called Buaxil by Ikea. And the way it works is that there's a couple of white tracks installed on the back frame. These are the shelf brackets that just click in place. You can place them whatever you want and load up as much as you want on this frame. Now I did another fun thing. Since we're using these to dry oil, we don't want a lot of surface area touching the parts. So I 3D printed a whole bunch of these little brackets that have little screws screwed onto them so that you get just one tiny little point. These things super easily snap onto here and you got a dry rack. The whole frame is essentially just a bunch of scrap lumber. I attached a hinge at the top so you don't need to do any fancy cuts. Screw on a couple of pieces at the bottom, attach some wheels and you're essentially done. And since all the shelf brackets come off and there's a hinge in the top, if you really wanted to, you can make some bolted together mechanism at the bottom so you can unbolt it fold it together and the whole rack would be really easy to store. Enough of that, let's finish up these drawer parts so we can install them. And there's a varying amount of stuff in a way. Let's start with the one that has the most amount of modified bits. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I didn't really feel like dealing with all this when we made the parts initially. So all the parts were the same. They were all sanded, edge banded and oiled. So all I had to do now was chop off some various bits and I got lucky so that I could reuse some of the test pieces from all that oil testing. I was able to just cut down most of these pieces to a lower height. Some of them needed some loves with some chamfers and some more edge banding. And I had to recut the side piece. But instead of cutting off the top, I was able to just cut off the bottom and then cut a new groove in the bottom of it. So now all that fits together. And because I didn't want to cut a bunch of new parts, I tried cutting this back section here into three parts with a Japanese handsaw so that the cut would be really thin. So now I can move that piece to the front, move everything over, and we're good to go. And then just like with all the other stuff, you need to carry them up the stairs. <laughs> And of course, hope that they fit. Now, a little trick to get this cut out just right is to glue it first. And then once all the glue is set, use a trim router and router out that back plate. Now, fingers crossed. I really hope that this thing fits. No, where? It's that corner. First try. <laughs> it's pretty cool, isn't it? What does you think? Maybe touches a little bit. All right. I'll fix that little nick later, but for now, I'm just super happy that everything went together the way it did. The only thing missing now are some fronts and the countertop, and we'll do both of those once everything else is installed as well. Now, the next step is installing the back section and a huge wall, but as you might have guessed, all this takes a ton of time. So instead of making you guys wait another month for the next video, I'll make more videos shorter and we'll just do this entire process step by step. But that doesn't mean that we haven't already started on that back wall. As you can see, those are all the appliances. But in the spare bedroom over here, we've already got piles of drawers, fronts, and even in the bedroom, there's random parts in the kitchen. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.